cataractcoach.com, and we're doing surgery on a patient with pseudoexfoliation syndrome. Now, we see the pseudoexfoliation material on the anterior lens capsule, but fortunately, the dilation looks pretty good. But there's another way we can judge and tell whether or not we have loose zonules in this patient, and that's coming up right now. When we poke in with the capsule rexus forceps, watch how the anterior capsule wrinkles. See those wrinkles? That tells me that the anterior lens capsule is not taut or tight like the head of a drum. That's what we want. And as we tear this rexus, see how it wrinkles in front of the capsule or tear? Again, these tell me that the zonules in this eye are going to be weak. So yes, even though it's good dilation and pseudoexfoliation, this wrinkly and loose anterior capsule is because the zonular apparatus is relatively weak. So you have to be very careful here. That's a very important sign. A little hydro dissection being performed here. Well, this patient does have a sufficient uh, cataract. This is a good solid 3 plus nuclear sclerosis. We've tilted it out of the capsular bag. We've prolapsed a little bit and did some hydro delineation. And now we're going to do some phaco chop. We're going to divide up this nucleus, first putting in more viscoelastic. We'll break up the nucleus with the phaco probe and the chopper into pieces. Now, by having it tilted out of the capsular bag, I think we have less stress on the zonules, less stress on the capsule. There's the first chop, and we see we get a pretty reasonable separation of the nuclear fragments. Using the phaco probe and the chopper now just to emulsify the pieces. At this point, the chopper's job is to primarily feed in these little pieces towards the phaco probe, and we can do another sub-chop like this to break up the cataract nucleus even further. You want to use high flow, high vacuum for this nucleus removal, and we want to try to stay at the iris plane away from the corneal endothelium. Last bits of the lens nucleus are being removed here. Chopper's going into the safety position to prevent the posterior capsule from coming forwards. Very important to avoid damaging that. Now we're going to take, in, take our IA probe and remove the cortex. Now, with, we, with the loose zonules that we know about, it's very important to be cautious during cortex removal. So don't be very aggressive here because the zonules will rip. They're not that strong. So we're going to go little by little. And so in this case, we'll spend more time on cortex removal than we did on nucleus removal. So again, grabbing little pieces of cortex at a time, stripping it centrally, and the entire time I'm watching the capsular rexus edge, I want to make sure that that rexus edge stays still. Because if the rexus edge is moving, that tells me the zonules are breaking or getting worse. So nice and easy, taking our time back and forth, we'll remove the lens cortex here. And again, this is not a fast procedure. Don't go faster. This is where you're likely to run into trouble and cause capsule issues. So nice and easy. And if there is some stubborn cortex, like we have here sub-incisionally, just not able to get it out safely, that's okay. We can first put the eye well in the eye and then use that to help hold the capsule at bay while we remove that residual cortex. So yes, there's still some sub-incisional cortex there, which we'll have to remove. We'll fill up our capsule bag here with the cohesive viscoelastic. And now comes the IOL. So you have many choices here. I'm going to go with a single piece acrylic lens because the rest of the case is going to be fine and this patient has sufficient strength in the remaining zonules. Yes, they are a little bit weak, but I anticipate given this patient's advanced age, she's well into her 80s, almost 90, that this will certainly last her lifetime. Rotating the lens in the appropriate position, letting the haptics open up, and you see we have a very nice overlap of the optic by that rexus. Now we can use the IA probe to remove that stubborn sub-incisional cortex, also going behind the IOL to remove viscoelastic. And we can go in front of the IOL as well. So here's that sub-incisional cortex, last little bit coming out. And we'll clean up as best we can. Now, I wouldn't go crazy here. If you have a little bit of residual cortex, tiny, tiny strands like you see here, little wispy fibers, you can leave them alone. I'm lifting the iris with the chopper just to make sure that there are no residual uh, pockets of cortex that remain. There's a little bit there, which we'll go after. But otherwise, the case looks really good. Also, be sure to read the article about cataract surgeon patients 
uh, over age 90. This patient's almost 90, and so a lot of the same rules apply to her. Looking pretty good. And then we'll plan for her other eye in the next couple of weeks. The patient's other eye also has exfoliation, and as is often the case, it's asymmetric. So the other eye has a little more pseudo-exfoliation than this eye does, and that's evidenced by a little bit less pupillary dilation on the other side and more pseudo-exfoliated material on that lens capsule. So again, clearing out the AC, sealing up our incisions, we're almost done with the case. You see the wrinkle on the central posterior capsule? We can help that go away by really hyperinflating the eye, but that's just another indication of loose zonules. We'll seal up the last incision and call it a day. So good learning. Remember, watch out for those striae, those radial wrinkles. That's a sign of loose zonules.